angiotensin system and are called angiotensin converting enzyme 1 or ACE1 and angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2. ACE1 enzymes are responsible for blood vessel constriction and increasing blood pressure. And ACE2 enzymes are responsible for blood vessel dilation and for lowering blood pressure. And this is where the vitamin D virus respiratory distress connection gets interesting. Before we jump into COVID-19, I first want to paint a mental picture of the all used to tell and how the virus works and why it can be so deadly. It is well known that poisonous snakes can kill, and they kill by lethal injection of venom. Venom attacks the ACE1 enzymes responsible for increasing blood pressure. When the snake venom becomes toxic and inhibits all ACE1 activity, the snake bite victim loses its ability to produce blood pressure. And when blood pressure decreases from 120 to 80 to 50 to zero, the result is organ failure and death. The opposite is true for coronavirus. Think of COVID-19 as a toxic venom that attacks the ACE2 enzymes responsible for decreasing blood pressure. And when a toxic viral load completely inhibits ACE2 activity, causing blood pressure to rise uncontrollably, it too can result in organ failure and death. So now that we have a good mental picture to demonstrate the importance of ACE1 and ACE2 in regulating blood pressure, let's take a closer look at how it all comes together with vitamin D and coronaviruses. ACE2 enzymes are the virus's key to penetrating cell membranes and infecting our cells. The virus uses its spike S protein to adhere to the ACE2 enzyme and to gain cell access. And when the virus sticks to so many ACE2 enzymes that the viral load becomes toxic, ACE2 activity is completely inhibited, and with it, our ability to downregulate blood pressure. No longer constrained by ACE2, ACE1 quickly goes about its business of raising blood pressure, and it can quickly rise from 120 to 240 and beyond. When blood pressure rises this high, the fluid is squeezed out of the cells, and this excess fluid can collect in the lungs and fill the tiny air sacs, making it difficult to breathe. When blood pressure gets this high and acute respiratory distress sets in, the body's inflammatory response to infection kicks in the and can quickly escalate out of control. When the infection enters the lungs, the body responds by sending immune cells to attack the infected area, resulting in localized inflammation. Usually this is a controlled response. In cases of comorbidities, compromised immune systems, and other genetic and biological factors that intensify the virus's devastating effect, the inflammation can burn out of control, releasing a torrent of immune response and modulating proteins called cytokines. When an out-of-control cytokine response known as the cytokine storm occurs, it can lead to serious organ damage and death. In studies done with other coronaviruses such as MERS and SARS, Vitamin D has been shown to run nutritional interference between the virus and ACE2 enzymes, reducing adhesion properties and its ability to stick to the ACE2 enzyme. This is important because as we discussed, adhesion of the virus to ACE2 enzymes is the key to the virus's ability to infect the cells and to disrupt blood pressure regulation. This may be why lower vitamin D serum levels are associated with more severe COVID-19 clinical outcomes. Lower vitamin D serum levels make it easier for the virus to adhere to ACE2 enzymes and to deliver the toxic load that can lead to respiratory illness, organ failure, and death. I hope this information has answered some of your questions regarding vitamin D and COVID-19, and I hope you will consider vitamin D as a vital frontline weapon in your COVID-19 defense plan. Increasing vitamin D serum levels is a safe, low-risk, high-reward decision you can make today. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and stay well.